why don't we start do we want to send the poll out now rachel or yeah um mm, no let's send it out now okay. first come so let's I'll just briefly go over what we're gonna to do today. So um, Rachel is sharing a poll. Please raise your hand if you don't receive it. It's a series of questions that tell us a little bit about you, who you are, what your interest is, how you found out about us. As you're doing that, I'm going to provide a lay of the land, a little overview of what we'll be talking about. So. There will be a presentation. We don't have a slide. We don't have a slideshow or anything, but we'll be, pre we'll be presenting in detail what the experience of our yoga teacher training program is. And then there'll be time for questions at the end. So if I could request just during the presentation, make sure you're muted because sometimes there can be background noise and we don't know where it's coming from. So best case scenario, Mute yourself. If you have an urgent question during the presentation, that's totally fine as well. Raise your hand physically like this, just get our attention. There's also the raise hand feature in Zoom that you can use. And uh, you can see that at the bottom under reactions, if you wanna use that. So the, the topics that we'll be covering. So first of all, I'm gonna be providing a high level summary of the YTT program, including the platform that we've chosen to use, the online platform. Then Rachel will be going into a deeper dive, including how the program's structured, what you'll be learning and how you'll be receiving feedback and certification. Then I'll be talking about who our faculty members are. And then I'll pass it back to Rachel to talk about what it is like being in a cohort including things like our regular live online classes, our regular monthly meetings, which are all done through Zoom, our one-on-one -on -one assessments done through Zoom as well. And then of course our live online level three and uh, the level four retreat, which is in person, of course. And also the opportunity to engage with others, study cohorts, uh, one of the great things about Thinkific is that it prevents an opportunity to become part of a community who is, you know, has like interests and, and want to learn the same, same content together and benefit from learning together. Then Rachel will also be talk to, talking about how you are assessed and then I'll come back and discuss the payment options. So to begin, <clears throat> so our our program officially is 250 hours. After 200 hours, you are certified to teach according to Yoga Alliance. However, it's crucial for us that you have some in-person time. So the 50 hours at the end is in-person at a retreat center. So it's 80 hours in level one and 80 hours in level two, 40 hours in level three, and then 50 hours at the level four retreat. And just to provide some context, we originally designed this program to be online. And it was actually before COVID, it was designed to be 180 hours online and 70 hours in person, which would have created a very busy retreat. Once COVID hits, we quickly adapted to add that level three online piece, which provides, which, which is actually, we were very thankful that we did because it provided another opportunity to have an interactive piece. And we've learned very quickly how teacher training can be interactive online. And it's been, it's been fantastic. So a little bit about me and Dio with me. So I'm the founder of Dio with me. Whether you found us through Diogo with me or not, this is one of the many branches of Diogo with me that Rachel has mostly been responsible for facilitating, creating, designing. The and <clears throat> Rachel and I have partnered because we have a lot of the same life values and goals. And the uh, so Diogo with me is mission based. Sorry, yeah, I was going to say something funny. Well. 
David and I have known each other a long time. We've known each other how, like 15, 16, 15 years now, 16 years. It's so long. It's I can't impossible. <laughs> I can't even remember. But I was just thinking, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to share something, but I'm moving into a new house. David has chickens. And just in terms of aligning our life values, David, I too wish to have chickens on my, in my new place. Oh yeah. It's so fulfilling having chickens. <laughs> it but really is. Her, I, I know I'm excited. My mom has chickens. I'm sorry, guys. I totally derailed that. But when David said we have shared values, it's true. We do. We have shared values in terms of quality of teaching and training and things like that. But also I just got also chickens, chickens. also chickens, <laughs> which um, if we could set a separate uh, info session aside, I'd be happy to talk about chickens for now. <laughs> They're fascinating creatures. <laughs> so the deal with me is I would like to say that Diogo and me is very different than most of our competitors. We are, so we offer a lot of our content for free and our philosophy is that those that are paying make it access, make it um, those who cannot pay able to access free online yoga. We value all of the values that are true to yoga, honesty, generosity, community focused, service oriented, caring deeply about others and the planet, diversity, we also are social purpose, which means that our decision-making is affected by the planet and people just as much as profit. We're small, we're owned by myself and my brother, Sean, which means that we make decisions that are better for our community, not for our investors, because we don't have any. We are very careful with things like social media. We have a very strong uh, ethical principles. So we only use social media because social media can be harmful to people, we make sure that we use social media in careful ways. We choose to create content that we believe in, that will help people get through their day in difficult times. We choose instructors that have the same values as us, same with our core team. Everybody lives according to these principles. That's very important to us. And of course, we value high quality instruction, high quality video within the budget that we have. So that's a little bit about Diog with me. Now, a little bit about the platform that we chose because the, the platform really does dic dictate not only the student experience, but it dictates how easy it is for us to use it. We did a lot of research before we choose one, chose one and we ended up going with a platform called Thinkific. And we did so because it is amazing. It, it excels in all of the most important components of online course delivery, online education, in terms of student experience, design, interactivity, support, educational standards. The layout is really simple. It's easy to navigate. There are never moments when you feel lost or uncertain. They've really mastered the art of online course delivery. It's clean, uncluttered. The user experience is smooth and stress-free. It also presents a lot of opportunities for interactivity. For example, we have the ability to, to add a speech bubble to any page for you to ask a question or add feedback and for us to, to see that and respond to it. We also set up cohort discussion groups within Thinkific. So there are common pages, kind of like forums where you can go just to post anything really, whether it's a comment, a passionate feeling that you're having in the moment or a question. And we've also, we also encourage you to find study buddies through any other channel. Um, some of them have used WhatsApp in the past. And Thinkific offers unparalleled support, not only to us as, as a faculty, but the ability for you to connect to us and for us to respond to you quickly or even see that you registered for a course so that we can reach out to you. And then lastly, educational standards. Thinkific presents a streamlined way for us to assess your knowledge and reach out to you if you need help with any concepts to see when you're falling behind or you've jumped forward and connect with you then. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing platform that makes everything that we need to do very easy. Okay, so that's kind of the high level 
presentation of the program. And now Rachel's going to take a moment to dive into the deeper concepts of our yoga teacher training. And I'd like to provide a little bit of a bio for her. And I'm going to say some really nice things about Rachel right now. <laughs> and when you're when you have an old friend like this, sometimes it's hard because old? Most, mostly what? mostly you want to nudge them in the ribs the whole time and tease them. So I'm I'm going to struggle through this. <laughs> so Rachel, we wrote this a little while ago. So it says you've been practicing for 20 years, teaching since 2004. Is that right? Uh, yeah, practicing yeah. since 1998. Okay. So that's whatever, 23 okay, years. So that's a long time. I guess. You have your 500 hour teacher training certificate. <laughs> You've been a teacher trainer since 2007. Mm -hmm. And some notable locations would be Yoga Works and Y Yoga, which are both in Vancouver. Yoga Works is in LA. Well, actually, Yoga Works doesn't okay. exist anymore, but it used to be in New York City in LA. Okay. But Hopefully now you it's gone. Have anything to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> you created teacher trainings. You built the YTT department for Y Yoga in Canada. Mm -hmm. You have an extensive experience leading YTT programs, running a yoga business, which is very, mm -hmm. very key to to making a living from being a yoga teacher. You've managed yoga studios, auditioning, hiring, managing teachers for 10 years. You've written a ton. Huffing, Huffington Post, Yoga International, maybe six published books now, is that right? I yeah, I think, it's, I think it might be six now, yeah. And I have, I have, you, have, you have a master's in online education, which is Woo! one of the biggest reasons why um, I brought you in. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is my what? This is my new. Isn't it pretty? Look, it's so cute. Oh. It's so it's so cute. I know. <laughs> Shameless plug. Okay. All right. Anyways, I know. it's just so adorable. <laughs> All right, pass it on to you, Rachel. Go ahead and tell right. everyone a little bit more about the program. Yeah, sure. So, um, first, let me tell you about you. The session polls. Yay! So. Three, uh, so most of you guys are from the US, but we also have Canada and the UK represented, yay. Um, about half of you are interested in developing your personal meditation asana practice. No one has said they are committed to becoming a professional yoga teacher, but it's like, just love yoga, wanna know more. Oh, sorry, a couple have said everything. Wanna be a professional yoga teacher, love it. Wanna know more, wanna advance my practice. So nice spread. And yeah, sometimes people think that you have to do, um, you have to be a yoga, like you have to want to be a yoga teacher to do a teacher training, but tons of our, tons of our students do it just because they love yoga. Now, the fun thing is, is that once you learn how to teach, you kind of go, oh, because a lot of people start off thinking, no, 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 no. But then once you start doing it and you realize you can, and you realize it's fun, you get excited about sharing it. So a lot of people become teachers, even if they just started the program, just because they love yoga. That was like me. I really did the, my first YTT. It's like, I just love yoga and I want to know the philosophy and I want to know more about it. Um, but then I got addicted to it all. <laughs> now, now it's my world. Um, and about 60% of people are site members. And that's how you found us. We do have a Google search and an other, a mysterious other in there. So anyway, so that's just you guys. Um, I'll share the results in case you care to take a look. Um, yeah, so a little bit about the program. I'm just going to stop sharing so that I was distracted. All right. So, um, the program is, it's, I love this program so much. So I taught yoga teacher trainings for both yoga works and then developed the programs for why yoga and, <clears throat> and loved them. And they were wonderful and wonderful, but I was so excited to collaborate with David because we really saw that one of the things about do yoga with me is that we're reaching people who may not necessarily have the time or the resources or be in the right geographical location to go to a studio all the time. And so we thought, how amazing would it be to create a teacher training for our community, right? That could really reach a lot of different people. And I had gone back to school to get my master's in instructional systems and learning technology, which is like a big, long phrase, uh, basically saying online learning and education because I really wanted to be able to do this in a skillful way. I wanted to create education in a more skillful way. And even though I created a bunch of trainings, I felt like there's a better way to do this. So that's why I got my master's. And so I was able to come 
Dave and I were able to partner up and say like, let's, let's do this for, um, do yoga with me. And so the program itself is a, it's a very comprehensive teacher training for, and you learn how to teach both Hatha and Vinyasa styles. So, um, it's really about you creating your own teaching voice. So we give you lots of very practical tools. The training is very interested in empowering you with tools and knowledge so that then you're able to create a safe and effective, smart class experience that really speaks to your demographic. Cause some of you are going to want to teach seniors. Some of you are going to want to teach kids. Some of you are going to love to teach athletes. Some of you are just like, I don't want to teach <laughs> all for me, but we want people to be able to be creative with these tools um, and really speak to the people you want to speak to. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about what's involved. So um, the training has a lot of, um, first of all, asana, of course. So there's practices every week. Um, once we get into level three, we do personalized asana labs where we look at bodies and we workshop alignment and all these different poses. Um, inside level one and level two, you get um, lots of deep, juicy background into yoga. So philosophy, we do the yoga sutras, we do yoga history. Um, later on in level four, if you come to the in-person retreat, we do the Bhagavad Gita. So you get um, a nice uh, understanding of the traditional roots of yoga. And we also do anatomy. I am an anatomy as indicated by the skeleton. No, but I love anatomy. I'm very passionate about it. I'm actually just finishing my massage therapy certification as well right now. Just be honestly, because I wanted to learn more about anatomy. David has actually is also a massage person or was back in the day, many, many moons ago. Um, so anatomy and like safe alignment, functional movement, appropriate biomechanics, really recognizing the diversity of the body is really important to us. And we also want you to feel empowered to know that, hey, when I'm practicing, this is what's happening in my body. I can't tell you how many students um, just did the module on the anatomy of the hip and then are like, wow, now I really understand why I felt unstable there and now how to stabilize myself or now I understand what's going on. So the anatomy really supports the alignment and the asana. And it also, if, for those of you who wanna teach, it allows you to feel really confident that you're giving a safe class that's appropriate for lots of different bodies um, and that you know what you're doing, which is important. Um, we do sequencing. So the sequencing in the program is peak post sequencing. It's a wonderful way to learn how to craft classes. Um, so rather than giving you a sequence and saying, here's the sequence, just do this. Instead, we teach you how to think about sequencing so that again, you're able to create sequences that are reflective of the you know, class intention that you wanna create. And again, that are safe for the body and really take the body on a journey that's going to be effective. Um, we also cover lots of fun topics. Well, David does meditation. That's so important to the site, you know, in terms of um, you know, self-care, reducing anxiety, classes on pranayama, uh, we have classes, we do business in level three and level four, we do more of the business side of things um, and kind of teach you how to navigate that. So if you do want to be a teacher, we can kind of get you set up with some good tools for moving out there into the world. Um, and we have like some fun stuff. Fiji does the mudras and some of the subtle body courses. So we put in some fun stuff as well for that's just like um, very interesting and part of more of the philosophical tradition. So you kind of get your feet wet and stuff and can, um, and then if you like it, then you could go and study that more. So it's really robust. It's really brings, you know, the traditional teachings of yoga into a modern mindset where we're interested in, again, you know, biomechanics and functional movement and keeping people healthy and reducing stress. So that's kind of the synopsis of the program. So when you come out of the program, you will feel confident to create on your own and to teach hour long classes and either the Hatha style or the vinyasa style. So that's what you'll be able to do when you graduate. In addition to that, you'll have a whole lot of information underneath you um, that supports all of that work. So what makes the, this program a little different than other online programs? David mentioned, we actually structured ours to be online. So it's, it wasn't sort of, you know, when COVID hit, everybody kind of had to adapt really quickly and kind of throw together their online courses and bless them for doing so. And people have done great work out there, but their courses weren't designed from the beginning to be delivered this way. So the way ours is developed, it's, it really blends working at your own pace, being connected to a cohort um, with all of the, the things that online can do, like those assessments that you can take and um, <clears throat> you know, being able to do things at your own time. It blends that with the in-person experience of being with faculty. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So the way that the program is structured, David mentioned it, but the first two levels are 
online. So most of it's, um, even though we have like, you kind of work week by week, it's about five hours of work a week. That includes a couple of practices that we have you do as well. So that's kind of the workload you're looking at. And you go through it with a group of students, your cohort. And so you can do the work whenever it suits you during that week. Uh, you can work a little ahead, you know, sometimes if you need to or fall a little behind and catch up. Um, but basically we're together for that. And then every month you have a meeting with a faculty member. So everybody gets together as a group and um, we either meet and kind of just connect or we workshop specific skills that you guys are working on. So you can really kind of get into the live flavor with other humans, right? Um, and then in level three, oh, and at the end of level two, you'll meet with faculty one-on-one. -on -one. And then level three is our live online. And at the end of level three, um, that's when you can teach. So you get your certification, you can go out and teach in the world and yay, and that, that could be it. But we recommend you do level four, which is our in-person retreat because that's for in-person teaching. And we can't give you those skills online. We can get to a certain point, but there are certain skills like hands-on assist. You can't do that through a computer as much as I would love to touch you, I cannot. So that's what that space is for. Um, and then, yeah. And so that creates our whole 250 hour program. Um, anybody have any questions on like the structure of the program so far? We'll talk a little bit more about the assessments and the faculty interaction later. But any questions so far? Yes, Kim. Can you uh, say again, so level one is 80 hours and two is? Um, about 80 hours, about the same. And then three is? Uh, three is 50. I think, hold on, I have this written down specifically. I should know this off the top three, of my head and I don't. 50, three is 50 hours. Three is 50 and four is 40, 40 hours. Okay. Yeah, so cool. all irons out. I'm just, whenever I get a math question, my brain melts. I'm like, <laughs> deer in headlights. So the 250 includes the level the level four part, okay. Correct, it's 200 level one through three. And then that, yeah. And actually I think it's, I think we actually flipped it so that level, so that you hit 200 at the end of level three and then the next 50 is going to be in the retreat. So I think it's 49 hours technically in the level three retreat. Cool, thank you. Right. Yeah, sure. Faculty, David? Yeah. Um, just in case uh, this wasn't emphasized, so the cohort, you are they're meant for you to join a group of people and the required time is about five hours a week. And then you have the option of joining a self-paced, which you can do at your own pace. You just um, kind of lack the, the more interactive element that the cohort brings into it. So the faculty, we have brought together four teachers who are not only really highly experienced and passionate about yoga, but these four teachers, they, they fill like certain niches within the program. It's really like we complement each other in a way that I just appreciate more and more over the years. And if you're impressed with big numbers, we have together been teaching for over a hundred years. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to be too proud of that. And then it says how old I am. <laughs> so I, I spoke about Rachel already. My background is I was actually an environmental science major uh, way back in the day. I went to McGill University and I wanted to be an, I wanted to be an ecologist. And it's actually amazing how similar ecology is to the study of of yoga like it's it's all about life and balance and and uh so the transition was very easy for me so i went first went into massage therapy which gave me a very strong anatomy background and then into a teacher training and i quickly be went into being a yoga teacher and then my my passion for many years has been vipassana meditation so i've been on many long retreats and this has been something that I guess it's it's kind of a it's always a little bit of an experiment for me to understand how the mind works and to understand how to help people with anxiety, depression, stress, sleep disorders. Those are things that I care passionately about. And of course, I founded Yoga With Me. That was about 12 years ago now that it's existed. 
a little bit about Fiji. So Fiji has been teaching for about, for over, just over 20 years. Like Rachel, she has her 500 hour certification. Teachers that she has trained with include Arlene Bjork and Peter Stereos. Peter Stereos has been one of her main mentors and she did her 300 hour with him under the Levity Yoga platform. And her course or her school of yoga is called Mind Into Matter Yoga School. And she actually, she's been a teacher training her, trainer like Rachel herself. So she's led teacher training separately from the yoga with me. Tracy has, Tracy's been in the fin fitness industry for over 30 years. She actually started as an ACE personal trainer and then a BCRPA fitness instructor, which is a certification that you get here in British Columbia. She also has her bachelor's and for her, it was at McMaster University in education phys ed. She also has her 500 hour certification and she has met, led many retreats. She's also been a teacher trainer for other schools. She's trained with Shiva Ray, Janet Stone, Rodney Yee, Chris Chavez. And she's just like Rachel Fiji. She is a lovely human being. So I'm gonna pass this quickly right back to Rachel to talk a little, little bit about how the faculty and peer-to-peer -peer interactions work within the cohorts. Yeah, so this was super important to us. Um, so there's lots of opportunity for faculty interaction. So we have um, level one and level two where you're doing more of the pre-recorded stuff. Every week you're writing um, reflections into your discussion groups and faculty will, we always see that and the faculty member will comment on it or you can ask them questions. You, we like to keep things in the course so everybody can see it, but if you wanted to, you could also email them directly. Um, at the end of, or I should say once a week, in the level one and level two, actually it goes on. So for the whole course of your teacher training program, sorry, not once a week, once a month, we have a faculty led practice. So we all get together in a live stream practice space. And why this is so valuable is because faculty can be just like I am right now and give you feedback on your practice. Because you guys are practicing on your own so much, we wanted to, we wanna create lots of opportunities for us to be able to see you and say like, hey, Heather, move your hands forward a little bit in downward facing dog or Kim, Great, bend your knees just a tiny bit more, you know, just because you want to have that feedback from an outside eye to refine your own practice. And then also once a month, every cohort has a meeting with a faculty member. And again, we meet to do skill building or sometimes it's just to connect. Um, so that's two times a month that you have some coordinated things with your faculty members. At the end of level one and level two, you have a personal assessment with a faculty member. So that means that you're creating some materials, some videos and stuff like that, submitting them to us. And then a faculty member meets with you one-on-one -on -one to review all your skills, to talk to you, to connect, to see what you need to work on, to move forward, um, to affirm what you're doing really well so far. So that's a time at the end of level one and level two that you have some space and one-on-one -on -one time. Level three is all, in, is all live on Zoom, so it's all in person. Um, so that's lots of time. It's like 50 hours, 45 hours when you're with somebody. Um, so there's a lot of interaction there. And then of course, level four is the retreat, which is in person. So there's lots of interaction there as well. Um, let me just touch briefly on how you are assessed because it's like scary. So in every course that there is, um, there's little, you know, quizzes and stuff like that. Those are more so that you can get fit, like sort of like immediate feedback on concepts and things like that that might be important. The end of every course, there's an online quiz, which you do need to pass. You can take it multiple times, but we just wanna make sure that you've really gotten that content down. At the end of each level, that assessment, there is a, a personal assessment that you do with faculty where you do a big online, um, an online exam about the whole level. And then you also submit videos of your teaching and your practicing so that we can really kind of hone in on what you need to work on. So that's the end of level one and level two. The end of level three, you are creating a class with your peers. So part of level three, which is all this interaction part, you create a class with your peers, you guys teach it. So um, four people will, will teach a class generally and you teach to the camera. So what's important to us is, that, you know, when you're practicing, like you guys have practiced with Do Yoga With Me, you know how we're always doing the practice and talking at the same time, right? That's nice, that's great, but that's not how we want you to teach live classes. So that's how you start teaching because that's easier. But by the end of level three, 
you teach here like I am now because we want you to cultivate your skills in seeing your students, right? That's what kind of makes the difference between leading a class and teaching a class. We want you to be able to do both. You can teach from your mat, and that's actually easier in some ways, but we also want you to be able to teach to your students because this is what you do in a live class, right? Where you walk around and you look at your people. So by the end of level three, that's where you get to. Ah, and then level four is kind of workshopping those more advanced skills like hands-on assists and theming and owning the teaching space in a way. Um, yeah, so those are the assessments. They're not scary. Um, you'll be very well prepared for them by the time that we, we hit those marks. But I do like to mention to people that we often will work with students. Like if there's, you know, someone needs a little extra help on something, um, we have options for doing that. Um, if, you, if you need a little extra work um, to hit some of the skills that you need for your assessment, like say someone comes into their level two assessment and they're doing really well, but they're kind of not getting this one skill, we will work with you to give you feedback so that you can come back and keep, you know, and kind of advancing. So if, if you want to um, complete the training, we will work with you to do that. It's not like, oh, they failed the assessment, they're out. It's nothing like that, right? The assessments are just a way for us to help identify any places that we need to grow your skills more. Yep. So that would be the lay of the land with the assessments. And, and just David had mentioned the difference between doing it at your own pace and working with a cohort. I highly suggest everybody at least starts with a cohort, even if you need to kind of pull your schedule back or work forward a little bit, um, because we can be a bit flexible with that, but it's so nice to have a community of peers to be able to work with. So, David, back to you. Yeah, within a cohort, you can always change to self-paced. It actually doesn't even matter. You're, you're doing the same content yeah. anyways. You can just let us know and then just kind of proceed on your own. Yeah, and vice versa. Some people start off self-paced and then I put them in a cohort, so. All right, I'm gonna share my screen for the next section. Oh, can you make me the host, Rachel? I'm unable to share. You're muted. You should be able to share your screen as a participant, I think. No, you can't? No. Nope. Okay, fine. Thank you. There you go. You're welcome. Okay, so this is our landing page for the program. I'm sure everybody here has seen this. I'm going to take you through the payment, the um, yeah, the cost, and how and the payment options. So I'm just going to scroll. You've probably seen all this, all these separate sections, all the way down at the bottom is our YTT pricing. So you essentially have a few options. One is a la carte. So you can actually pay $35 per course for 15 courses. And then you need to do the final assessment, which is $150 for every level. So that makes your a la carte total $675 per level. So that'll be level one and level two. To save a little bit of money, you can buy a level one certification package, which includes your final assessment. So then you say save $75, or you can choose a payment plan. If you need to spread it out over three months, you can choose to pay $210 for three months. Then that's the same for the levels two. And so if you paid for level one and level two certification packages separately, that would mean that you're paying $1,200. And so you'd save $150. If you bought the level one and two certification package together, you would save a total of $200, or you'd have a payment plan of 240 times five months. And then once you're finished level one and level two, level three costs $1,000. These are all in US dollars. And then level four depends on the retreat center. So our teaching fee is from seven to $900, depending on when you purchase it. We have an early bird rate, and then it gets a little more expensive as it gets closer to the retreat. And then you would need to, actually it's different per retreat center. In Mexico, you need to book your accommodation with them. So the cost would depend on the room. And currently the Spain retreat, we put it together as a package. 
So the, for the teaching fee accommodation and food is all included in the price and everybody gets a similar accommodation. And if you have any questions about Spain, feel free to ask me. So I'll go back up to the top. So this is where you go to find all of the courses and packages. So level one and two packages are here, level one packages are here. If you want a la carte, it just shows you, oh, actually you can go to level one courses. That's probably better. See all of the a la carte courses. Okay, and then all the level three options are here. And we'll be adding one in May, May or June, which will be posted soon. And then of course our level four retreats in Mexico with the dates and uh, it states in the title whether room and food is included or not. And then Spain is in October. Okay, and then in case you don't know, we've got these drop downs, this drop down here to tell you more about the program and then testimonials from students. And the dashboard is where you go to access all the courses that you're enrolled in. Okay, and I'm going to, I'll stop sharing right now, and I'm going to share with you, we just received some video testimonials from six of our students. So I'm gonna share that link in the chat box. This is actually a video testimonial engine that we're using. So at the, at the, if you go to the link, you'll see at the top how to submit your video testimonial. So just ignore that, scroll to the bottom, you'll, you'll see uh, six from students who just graduated from our level three program. Yay. <laughs> okay, so uh, go, yeah, Kim, you've got your hand up. Why don't you go ahead and jump in with, with anything, question if you have one. You're muted. Yeah, okay. I, I was just wondering, um, like for the retreats that are for the teacher training, are those just teacher training retreats or is that, are those retreats open to a lot of other people too? Only, only teacher training students are attending. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we officially transition into our Q&A? So you can manually raise your hand or you can do as Kim just did. You can do I think the- Marilyn's got a question. Okay, Marilyn, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at raising my hand. Um, yeah. So what you showed for the uh, Mexico and the Spain um, level fours, does that apply to this cohort that we're thinking about? Or is that mm. for a different- Yours would probably be school? after that. You could do Spain. If you signed okay. up now, you could do Spain. So the way that it would work, okay, say you're like, I wanna go through the training as quick as possible. So you would sign up for January level one, you would do the May level two, you would do the September level three, and you do the October level four. So you could go through. So you could potentially do the one in Spain if you wanted to go straight through. Okay, so my next question, um, uh, how, does, how does the future of COVID figure into all of this and what are your, you know, mm. uh, uh, contingencies uh, for, you know, Omicron, uh, you know. Yeah, that, that's, a really, that's a really great question because there are, yep. so we're very careful with the retreat centers that we work with because we only choose centers that are locally owned, that we know where the money's going, that they have a, uh, they, have a, they generally have a program where they're supporting their community. So we want, we want to make sure that they're well-treated. So canceling is a hard choice for us. When we book with them, yeah. we want them to keep existing <laughs> because, of, because of the way they're running their business. And we like them. Like we know all the owners. We, we like working with them. So that's one factor. The second one is, of course, COVID is the future of COVID is completely unknown because of the mutants that can arise, we, we have absolutely no idea what it's gonna be like in three months. So the retreat centers are generally quite generous with their policies around COVID. And we do our best to make a decision months 
before the retreat start date so that people have a chance to either delay their travel plans until the point where they know they're going, where they feel confident enough they're going to go, or Mm -hmm. they have enough time to cancel whatever they've set up in advance and so they can make other plans. So for example, in our Mexico retreat, this goes into a little bit more of the policy that we decided to go forward with. So our, our general approach is to issue surveys. So all of our level retreats, we send out a survey and we get a sense of what dates and times work for people. It, it applies to level four as well. So we, we try to choose locations and times that work for level three students. We also get a sense of how many people are vaccinated. And then we, ish- we decide on a policy around vaccinations based on the students that are attending. So currently our Mexico retreat requires proof of vaccination. And we will send out a survey for the Spain retreats probably about four to five months in advance with that survey to see where people are at with that one. Does that answer your questions or do you, yep. do you, is there something that I left out, Marilyn? No, you covered it very thoroughly. Okay. Okay, anybody else have a question? I do. Kim. Kim. So, so can the level four, the level four has to be done after the other three are completed? Yes. Yeah, it's a, the, the program is actually built as a progression. So there's a purpose behind, we, it goes from 101 to 115 and then 201 to 215. And they're designed not only to progress in terms of understanding concepts, but also like giving you breaks from like stuff that requires a little bit more mental effort. Like anatomy will not be followed by two more anatomy, for example, <laughs> it'll be like anatomy and then maybe something in philosophy. And then, you know, it's, it's broken up. So it, it's a, it's more manageable. Okay. Carol. Carol. Um, my question is uh, related to pacing. So I heard, um, Rachel mentioned a sequence that would be kind of the fastest sequence that one might take, but um, let's say we choose the cohort option. So then is there a set sequence upon which we would finish those first two or three levels? Or is there an opportunity to step out? Both, yeah. So you could, somebody could conceivably take on work self-paced and finish sooner then the, what I suggested, what I suggested is actually the cohort schedule. So the cohorts usually run about four months, a little bit more than four months. So four months and then four months and then level three intensive, which is usually on weekends. But like David mentioned, we survey our students and we say, what's the schedule that's going to work best so far it's been weekends. So Saturdays and Sundays for three weekends in a row is our level three and then the level four. So, and they're all kind of, if you stay on track, you can just kind of put them one after the other. But if somebody wanted to like do an intensive of it, you could probably do the whole, I'd say you'd probably need four months to do the program effectively because it's, it's a lot to take in. Um, but if you like, didn't, you know, if you're like, I'm on vacation, or <laughs> I'm on sabbatical. I'm, this is what I'm going to do with my time. You could do it faster. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other Anybody questions? Else? Okay, great. Well, it was, it was a pleasure meeting everybody. Thanks for joining. And if you have questions that, that come up after too, like if you're like, oh, I wish I'd asked that, just email David or me at david at doyogawithme.com or rachel at doyogawithme.com. Super happy to follow up anytime with anything you might have. Yeah. Yay. Hope to see you in the next cohort. Okay, <laughs> nice to meet you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.